how to make a, a necklace that's a little bit outside the box. Um, it's a really fun design and I hope you like it. Now I have out here, this is going to be the focal bead, our little shell, and we're going to embellish it a little bit. So I have these little guys out, these little shell beads, and we are going to drop them below this little shell to create a really pretty focal. So I have five of the shells. I have five ball head pins. And as you can see, they're not perfectly straight. So I'm just going to straighten them a little bit because when we store them, they tend to get bent and kind of messed up so don't throw those away just straighten them out and there because there's nothing wrong with them other than they got a little bit bent and these are 24 gauge so they're not super strong but they're strong enough for a wrap loop and that's what we're going to do we're going to do a little wrap loop on these five shells and i'll show you then how we're going to attach them to the shell okay so we'll just stick these on our little shelves here. And then we're going to do wrap loops because these are going to be dangles. And if they catch on something, if we just did a simple loop, it would probably pull it right open. And we don't want to do that. Now what I'm going to be doing today too is showing you a different way to finish your necklace. A lot of people have problems with crimping when they first start making jewelry and I'm going to show you a really cool alternative. So I'm grabbing my head pin, I'm going to kink it, I'm going to turn my pliers up and over, I'm going to move my pliers around a little bit, pull this around to the back and wrap. Just like that. Okay. There's one. Oops, wrong pliers. So grab it at the top. Kink. Move your pliers like so. Up and over. Adjust your pliers. Take it to the back. Okay, and then we're going to grab the loop and we're not worried about putting this on anything because we're going to be attaching with a jump ring and we don't need to do anything right now other than get them wrapped. Okay, two, again, grab it at the top, kink it. Adjust your pliers up and over. Take, now, a lot of people, um, they'll just rotate their pliers like so. Just for me, it's just easier to do it this way. And these are soft enough that you can even wrap with your fingers. Depends on what size um, head pin you're using. Again, kink, adjust up and over and wrap okay i don't know about you guys but when i have repetitive work to do i tend to do it almost assembly line style everybody's different you do what's comfortable for you okay now we're going to cut these tails off and kink our tail in one, okay, you guys, this is a really cool design. I hope you like it. I made one for my friend, uh, and she really liked it, I think. So, so what's been happening with everybody? Is the weather getting warm where you are? Um, I'm in Florida, and it's definitely warm. All right, let me just tuck these little tails in real quick, and then I'll show you how we're going to attach them. 
you always want to do this because you don't want to number one you don't want to get scratched and number two you don't want to mess up your clothing or if you're making it to give away or sell or something you don't want somebody to get scratched your crimp pliers well depending on the kind of crimp pliers you have but these little skinny nose ones can you see how small that nose is or the tip is they're great for doing this and these are Zeron. I got them on Amazon and they're not really expensive if you want a pair. Okay we've got that all done. I had to bring my magnifying glass down guys sorry about that. So now we're going to take a jump ring and we are going to attach all of our little dangles to it. Where are my pliers? There they are. Okay, and I think one of these jump rings will be fine. These are six millimeter jump rings and they're pretty heavy duty. Um, I want something pretty strong here. So we're just going to open that jump ring and you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself, you guys. I want to show you a different way to crimp, um, as I had said before. So what we're going to do, this is Coriana chain. This chain is quite strong, but it is so incredibly fine that you can bead right onto the chain. And I get this chain from my friend, Wendy Whitman. She has it on her website, which is called Bead on a Wire. And I'll leave a link down below for you guys so that you can, if you want to get this kind of chain, you can. If you don't want this chain, you want to just put this on, um, regular beading wire you can certainly do that but this is just a really cool way to do something a little bit different and what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a crimp bead on this little piece of chain and just crimp it flat okay and then we're going to take a clamshell if you're not familiar with the clamshell <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys, my voice is just, these allergies are driving me crazy. Okay, you just slide your clamshell down over that crimp bead and close it. And look at that, you're done. That was your crimp. So we got to do that on both ends of our little piece of chain here. So thread on our clamshell like so. You see, take a crimp bead, crimp tube, whatever you use, thread it onto the chain. It takes a little finesse, you guys, because this is, this is small stuff. Bring that crimp tube down to the end of your chain. I want to make sure you can see. And just flat crimp okay bring the clamshell down and close it now you have a connectable piece of chain it's connectable at both ends so let's just go ahead and do all of these because we're gonna have to anyway so put it on our chain I've cut five links of chain to attach our little shells with and that'll all make sense here pretty soon put it on there oh look at that see now this kind of stuff happens i didn't get that crimped real good so i gotta go back and do it again make sure you get it closed good this is not wanting to stay. You guys, this kind of thing happens on occasion where you have an issue and you just have to be patient and keep working with it because you will get it. Okay. That one's not going anywhere. The one thing I'll caution you about, about using this kind of uh, finishing 
for your pieces is don't forget to put your clamshell on before you crimp. Because if you do, you've wasted it. You know, the only way to, there's no way to recover. I mean, it's done. <laughs> so make sure you do things in the order that you need to do them in. Um, this chain comes in different colors also. Um, you'll just have to see what she's got in stock. I looked last night and she did have it in stock in silver. So this stuff sells like hotcakes and she does run out, but she, she always restocks. And if you guys haven't watched any of her videos, I would encourage you to do so. She's very, very good. She's easy to listen to and she explains everything really well. Okay. We're almost done with this step, y'all. It won't take much longer. And then we'll start assembling. And I think you're going to really like this. It's so different from most things that you see. And I like different. How about you? I don't like to be cookie cutter. Squeeze good and tight. Make sure it's stuck. Okay, whoops. This small stuff can be a challenge to handle, as y'all know. Now, guys, this is just a technique that I'm showing you. You could do a necklace like this with any kind of bead. I mean, it doesn't have to be the beads I'm using. You can pull from your stash. I'm sure you got some great stuff. Okay. I thought that one was going to slip too, but it's pretty stable there. Okay. Now we got this one and one more. Um, again, I want to reiterate to you guys, if there are techniques or things that you want to learn, leave me a comment and I will do my best to be accommodating and show you things if you don't know how to do or try to come up with new things to show you how to do because i think that you know one of our biggest tools in this business in this um in the beading world is the fact that beaters are so generous with each other they share their ideas share their techniques and that's what really advances our craft the fact that we're willing to share, we're not selfish folks, right? We always want to help our fellow beaters. Let me grab a drink, guys. My throat is dry. Mm. Goodness. We're on our last one. Probably should have done some of these ahead of time instead of making you watch me do it. I'll try to do that in the future. You guys know this is my second video. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> there are crimp beads and tiny, tiny beads and pieces of this and pieces of that all over the place in here. I gotta take a day and tear it apart and clean it up and put it back together. your craft room get that way crazy messy I know mine does because you know I get into something and I don't want to stop and pick up and stuff just lays around oh, can't believe that I have never had this much trouble with clamshells in my life they're usually so easy must be because it's 5 a.m. <laughs> Think that's got anything to do with it? <sighs> Goodness. I have gotten so far behind on doing stuff because um, I make some wedding jewelry and I got a couple of bridal shops that have placed some orders that I'm still trying to get complete and it's made me 
feel like I'm behind, even though I really don't have a locked in time frame to get them done. It's still, when somebody wants something, I like to get it done. I don't like to make them wait. I almost forgot to put my clamshell on there. Did y'all see that? Oh, I would have been so upset. Okay. All right, we've got them all put together now. And I do have these in a certain order, I guess you could say. Um, I have some that are longer, some that are shorter. And I want to make sure I get them in the right place, you know. There's our longest one. And there we go. Okay, so now we will take our jump ring here and load these on in the correct order. See, we're just adding these on our jump ring in the order I want them in. Okay, and now what we're gonna do If I can keep it all together here, I may have to put a bigger jump ring just to accommodate all of these. You know what? I am. This jump ring is not big enough. Let's go to an eight millimeter. And try again. That's not right. Okay. Our middle one. This one. And this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach this to our shell like so. You're going to have to make sure you get this jump ring closed really, really well. Okay. Now. All right. Now we're going to attach our shells to this. And let's see. I think I want to use smaller jump rings than those. These are a little smaller. I thought I was going to use those, but I think they're a little bit big. I think I want to use something just a little bit smaller. And I think these are a little bit thicker too. So that probably is a good thing. And they're all tangled up, of course. <laughs> all right, now I also have uh, shells. I want my shells in a certain pattern also. So we're just threading those on with a jump ring. Make sure you get it closed really good. Run your finger over it to make sure it's smooth. That's the best way that I've found to test your jump rings is to run your finger over it to make sure that it's nice and smooth. If you've got a real smooth connection, you've probably got a good solid connection. Okay, this one goes here. The other thing that you have to be careful of when you're using the clamshells is to make sure that you have jump rings to connect with that will go through the loop because the the um, clamshells do have a really they're they're thin and if your jump ring is not perfect it'll slide out of there in a heartbeat okay all 
next. I can't wait to get this done. I know y'all are going to love it. It is so pretty when it's completed. And the nice thing about it is that um, because we're, because of the design, this is going to be really cool and comfortable for summer because it's light. It's not bulky at all. And you don't have a bunch of stuff hanging on your neck that's going to be hot. So I don't know about you, but man, the heat bothers me a lot more than it used to. As I get older, I've noticed. So does the cold, though. <laughs> There's about three months out of the year in Florida that it's extremely comfortable. The rest of the time, it's either hot or cold. Mostly hot and humid. Goodness gracious. Get in there. Little rascal. I might have to redo that one, y'all. It's being stubborn. Okay. Closing good. What do we got going on now? Let's shake it out and see what's happening. All right, what is wrong with this guy? Got a clamshell that's not good and open. Let me see if I can get it to open. If not, I'll have to redo this one. Ah, fingers crossed, you guys. Please go through. Please go through. Oh, yes. I just knew I was going to have to take that thing apart and redo that thing. But no, we don't. All right. And we have our focal completed. This is going to be real pretty hanging, y'all. But here is basically what we have now. Okay, now. What I did was I went ahead and got the beads that I'm going to use out and figured out our pattern and what we're going to do with them. So, like I said, you can use anything you want to, but I've chosen this medium tone blue that I'm going to use. And let me pick up my mat a little bit so that we have, so we can see what we're doing here. Now, like I said, this Coriana chain is so thin that you can actually bead directly onto it. Well, I'm just making a big mess. Set these out of the way here for a minute before I spill them all over the place. Okay, so now we're going to take our chain and we're going to start just threading things on. We'll start with this side. Uh, magic rods. I use these to see how my beads are going to go together, how they're going to look. I also use them for measuring. These were created by Louisa with Misty Moon Beaded Art. She actually holds, she invented them, she manufactured them, and she actually holds a patent on these. But I'm going to tell you, I've been beading for over, well over 20 years. And I didn't know I needed these. <laughs> I love them. They're wonderful for bracelets, especially where if you're doing a multi-row bracelet, it really helps you get everything situated. 
it's just like this chain. I mean, you know, I never knew there was chain that you could actually be directly onto. And you guys, my voice sounds terrible. I apologize. But anyway, all right. Now all I'm going to do is just string these beads directly onto this chain. And I did make sure that they would all fit before we started. So we shouldn't have any issues with that. And I'm going to just string these beads on and come back and show you the finished product because we're going to run out of time for recording. So just um, hang on and I'll be back shortly. Okay, guys, I have everything strung onto our chain now. And I want to show you how we're going to finish up. So the first thing we're going to do is grab a clamshell, put it on here. Okay, put our crimp tube on. And clamp that down. Make sure it's strong. Pull down our clamshell. Yep, we got a good connect there. Okay, we are ready to attach, you guys. Now, what I did is I pulled out a couple of these larger jump rings because we have a lot of space that's needed to get this put together. So we're going to open our jump ring side to side, like so. Oh, you know what? We got to open that pretty good because we got to go around that clasp here and put this side on there we go make sure you get it good and closed very very important here must be closed well okay all right one more time This side on. Lamp around our clasp. Close it real good. Okay. Now we need to stabilize our beads so that they all stay in place and I've put on a couple of uh, crimps while I was stringing so that when all is said and done we're going to want to put these in place and make them stay well I've just got this thing tangled nine ways to Sunday y'all good lord what have I done <laughs> don't tangle your stuff up y'all unless you enjoy messes apparently I do what have I done This is my fault, y'all. It's not the necklace's fault. It's because I was not paying attention. And I caused one of these to pop through where it shouldn't. There we go. All right. And see, if we don't stabilize this and put those crimps on there so that our beads don't slide around, it's going to continually do that. So we want to do that. But here's what it's going to look like. And it's just so cute. See? Isn't that pretty? And this is so pretty here that I don't think it takes away from it all. As a matter of fact, I really like that look. And you'll, you'll see some pretty clasps at the front of jewelry sometimes. So what you want to do now is hold it up. Let gravity help you out here. Make sure you've got it 
pretty centered. Make sure everything's where it needs to be before you clamp down on those two crimp tubes. And we're there. All right, so all I'm going to do, now these just need to hold them in place. You don't have to do anything super hard. Just make sure that they're not going to slide around. And there is our necklace. Isn't it pretty? Don't you love that? Okay. And this is something you guys can do with no problem. I know you can. It's really simple. I probably made it look harder than it is. <laughs> But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please subscribe and ring that bell so you'll know when I upload. And let me know if there's anything special you would like to learn or you would like to know about or you'd like me to attempt. <laughs> and we'll certainly do it for you. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will subscribe. We are trying to build this channel and... Um, just have a good time while we're doing it. So you guys take care and I'll see you on the next video. Okay. Bye.